Never pay full price for games ever again guys, G2A offers the cheapest CD keys you can find anywhere. Check them out by clicking on the link below. What's up guys, it's Ed from Taxors and welcome to this month's PC builds. We're gonna change things up and bring you a $700 mini ITX build along with a 1950 gaming and editing PC, which by the way you guys can find the links to all the parts mentioned down below. So let's go ahead and start this episode. So the first build is a $700 mini ITX gaming PC featuring the i3-6100. Now although this is a dual core processor, it does have hyper threading technology, meaning it acts as a quad core. And since most games take advantage of hyper threading technology, you won't be losing out on any frames. In fact, the 6100 shows similar performance compared to the FX8320E, which has 8 cores, and even the i5-4430. In some cases, the 6100 actually performed better. I did pick up a cooler just to keep the fan noise down and overall cooler temps, but it is optional and it's not required since you can't even overclock the CPU. For the motherboard, I went with the ASUS H110M, which is a very solid board for only $50 and has a lot of nice features. For RAM, I went with 8 gigs of G-Skill rip jaws rated at 2400 MHz. Now I did stick with a black and red theme for this build, hence why I picked up red RAM sticks and the MSI GTX 1060 graphics card. The GTX 1060 does perform better than the RX 480 and the GTX 970, so it made sense to go with that card for this budget build. Obviously you can pick up any GTX 1060 you want for your own build, but to keep the color scheme consistent, I went with MSI. For storage, I went with 2TB of hard drive space from Seagate, and for the case, I went with the black version of the Thermaltake Core V21. I'm calling this build the Dark Cube. And finally, juicing up all the parts is a 500W power supply from EVGA. Now you guys might be asking me, so Ed, which build is better, Ice Cube or Dark Cube? Well, obviously Dark Cube is better because the GTX 1060 wasn't available at the time. In fact, the GTX 1060 is nearly 75% faster than the GTX 960, so if you guys want a nice FPS boost in games, I would definitely upgrade when you have the money. Overall, this build will cost you a little over $700. Alright, so moving on to something with a little more power. This is a great PC for both editing and gaming, featuring the new 6800K 6-core processor that's great for editing and rendering 4K video. This is an unlocked CPU, which is meant for overclocking, hence why I picked up an H100i V2 cooler from Corsair and a very solid motherboard. The EVGA Micro 2 that features a USB 3.1 port and an M.2. Speaking of which, this time around I went with the Samsung 950 Pro M.2 SSD, which has ridiculously crazy speeds of up to 2500 megabytes read and 1500 write. This is where the operating system would be installed as well as any editing programs. Maybe even some games that you want loaded faster. Our secondary storage is going to be a basic 3TB hard drive from Seagate, and for RAM I went with 32 gigs of Crucial Ballistics Sport. I did do my best to keep the white and black theme consistent. For the graphics card, we are using the MSI GTX armor to match the color scheme, and it comes with some pretty beefy specs as well. Of course the brand is optional and you can go with any GTX 1080 you want. Powering this PC is the EVGA 600W power supply which has plenty of juice even after overclocking the CPU and GPU. And finally, bringing this entire build together is the Corsair Air 240 case. With a very compact form factor and sleek look, this is the perfect white case to complement the Micro ATX build. So that is it for this month's build. If you guys enjoy these monthly videos, be sure to hit that like button. And as always, you guys can find the parts linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.